my name is Scott Rollins. I am the Director of Student Services in Mathematics at UC San Diego. In my role, I oversee the undergraduate and graduate um, teaching programs. So I'm involved in overseeing scheduling, TA assignments, graduate student program, um, undergraduate advising, petitions, all aspects of the teaching program. General and computing um, that uh, I see on campus uh, center around uh, data, um, data analytics, data acquisition, interpretation. Um, that is currently um, big across all areas of campus, um, not just within you know, the traditional computing departments, but also in um, departments varied like economics, where they use consumer data uh, to inform their decisions, to education studies, where they use student data, um, to political science, where they use voter data um, and analytics. So it's it's becoming uh, widely dispersed across, across campus. Um, also, um, machine learning and AI um, related fields um, are becoming um, quite quite popular among students. Um, and as as someone in the mathematics department, um, we certainly have a role in, in servicing those sorts of trends by uh, providing the foundational uh, mathematical uh, theories and, and practices that that sort of inform how students approach the, the, the both the, the use of data and um, machine learning. Um, in, in more general about um, sort of just the general idea of, of students and advising students about computing is um, that we, we are, uh, with a project like Computing Pathways, we are, are trying to show students that you know, computing doesn't exist as silos, that, that computing as, as a function is dispersed throughout all areas of campus. So it's, it's, it's really trying to show that not just our topics scattered throughout uh, various areas of, of campus, but just the fundamental concept of, of what is computing um, and how do you use computing is something that, that exists uh, across all areas of campus. Uh, the way I would advise a student who's interested in getting involved in computing would be to first um, sort of speak with them about the, the fact that um, inherently computing is a tool and not just an end in and of itself, that computing is a way of, of exploring um, knowledge. So to find you know, fields that they're interested in applying that computing to and approaching it from that aspect. Um, so similarly, you know, that, that you know, reading is a tool and, and if someone was in, interested in reading, we would ask them, what are you interested in reading? You know, are you interested in you know, literature or reading about history and then going through those sorts of programs? So treating sort of computing in that sort of a, a, a sense that, that showing them that it, it's, it's a way to, to understand knowledge and, and, and the way to approach um, knowledge. Um, and and not just get them so focused on you know the word computing and and just what does it mean to to be involved in computing my advice for current students studying computing is that they there is a trend on on campus for students to be very much focused on what department they're in and sort of limiting themselves by what department they're in or want to be in or can get into. Um, and then thinking that if, for example, they can't get into computer science, that they can't do computing. That means they can't do what they want. But that's not true at UCSD that you know, just because you can't be in a particular major doesn't mean that you can't do what you want to do. It doesn't mean that you can't study what you want to study. It just means that your degree is going to look a little differently than someone else's degree. And try to get students to understand that that's an okay thing and that that's actually something desirable. You want to have an education that's focused and centered on you as an individual and not just, you know, 
be so tied into getting a specific piece of paper. So that's why, you know, something like Computing Pathways exists to show people that if you want to do computing, but you're not in computer science, but you're interested in it, how does cognitive science address the things that you're interested in? How does data science address it? How does you know, any number of fields, how does mathematics, how can can mathematics approach the the types of, of academic interest that you're looking for um, in a way that provides meaning and ultimately a uh, degree and hopefully uh, set students up for either future academic study or a career. Uh, common obstacles that students face um, has to do, I think, with um, a lack of planning a, a lot of times um, that, you know, that, that, that and, and then related to that um, very rigid planning. So, um, you know, life happens at a university just like life happens everywhere. If something needs to change, you need to have a, pl a flexible plan. So, um, you know, you didn't get into, you know, CSE 100 this quarter. That shouldn't break your your career at UCSD. It, you should have a plan that, okay, how do I shift my classes by one quarter? And that's something that an advisor will be able to assist you with. They can pull up, you know, proposed course offerings. They can walk you through the various websites that UCSD has on how to know when things are going to be offered, how to um, make an academic plan that has flexibility built into it. So I think students, one, not planning, and then two, when they do make a plan, making it a rigid plan are, are some obstacles. So that is something that advising on both steps can assist with. So advisors are very happy to meet with students at any point to go over um, proposed career plans, proposed curricular plans, and find you know a number of alternatives that students can take in order to get from point A, you know, the where they are now, to point B, you know, the degree. In general, is fairly easy. Um, it's just some, uh, you know, some some basic forms. Uh, specifically within mathematics, it's it's actually. Um, quite quite easy to do because the mathematics as as a field is both um highly conducive just in general to to being um, combined with other fields of study um, mathematics is a foundational area of education so students in engineering and social sciences and physical sciences and biological sciences um, will find that um, mathematics um, expands uh, the study that they're doing in their other major, and also um, the the sorts of courses that they do in their other major will be likely usable um, to some extent um, within mathematics. Um, so there's at UCSD, you're allowed to have um, some overlapping courses between the upper division uh, curriculum of, of both of your majors. Uh, also, uh, the math major are not particularly um, onerous in terms of the number of courses we demand um, at upper division. So it's usually 13 or 14 upper division courses. Uh, when compared to engineering, that's not that much. Um, so for many students, it's it's realistically only a few courses above what they would be doing as a minor to get a second major within mathematics. Uh, again, this takes some planning. So. Um, speaking with an, an advisor, going over the curriculum, um, and finding those areas of overlap um, is, is something that's important. The first thing I would say just in general about this is that internships are very important for, for students. Um, it is uh, something that is fundamentally important if you plan to go directly into um, a, a career um, directly after your undergraduate degree. Um, the, you know, you, you have to assume that everybody that's entering the job market, um, for the types of jobs that our students are looking at 
has an undergraduate degree. So you need to start having these internships to sort of um, sort of distinguish yourself from from the next student. Uh, the thing that you need to consider when looking for internships is that um, it's a job <laughs> that you know you need to look the the, the action the actual action of looking for internships is is a job. It's going to take time. You're going to have to be applying to these internships. You're not going to get, you know, you don't send out one application for an internship and expect that you're going to get that. So you need to approach it professionally um, and with intent that that this is going to be, you know, your goal is to get an internship. And then the second thing is to, to be um, mindful of the types of internships that you're looking for. Um, too often, students um, will think that just any internship is, is a good internship. Um, you don't necessarily want to be just looking at the sorts of internships that are going to be administrative in you know, going to get someone copy, going to run photocopies, that, that that's not the internship that, that we want students going into technical fields to be looking for. Um, you want to have something that is going to show a way for you to apply the, the, the knowledge that you've gained from the coursework that you've done at UCSD to um, real world um, examples. And that's what the internship is. It's the application of classroom knowledge to a real world um, situation looking to apply to a graduate school um I, i'm going to speak specifically about mathematics um, graduate programs since that's my area of expertise um but you the first thing to realize is that um you have to start soon after you start at ucsd um, once you start in your undergraduate program if you are thinking that you're going to go to a graduate program um you need to start planning for that uh, soon after you start um, as an undergrad. Uh, at, at most, you have, say, four years, a little over, um, between when you start as an undergrad and uh, when you would start as a grad student. Um, the applications are going to be due, uh, say, your junior year. So that's three years. Um, realistically, for a mathematics program, you need um, to have completed some advanced math theory classes by that time. So in order to get into those classes, you need to start planning, a, you, know, you need to start planning back each step um, to where say by the time your second year as an undergraduate, you need to start putting things in place. Again, this is something that you would start talking to an academic advisor about making a plan um, in mathematics, something that that undergraduate students don't really uh, consider um, too much when they're they're applying for a graduate program is um, letters of recommendation are extraordinarily important. Um, mathematicians know mathematicians, so um, the, the the student or sorry the faculty at whatever program you're going to be applying to know faculty at UCSD they'll talk to each other and they expect that the letters that are written um, are truthful and straightforward in, in, in the evaluation of students. So you don't just get a letter from somebody who you took for calculus and got an A in that one time three years ago. You want someone who's um, a senior faculty member as you can, can get, someone who's taught you hard classes for multiple quarters. Um, so in mathematics, that's going to be a faculty member that's taught um, real analysis to you for two or three quarters, someone that's taught abstract algebra for two or three quarters, someone that's taught um, probability theory for two or three quarters, someone who can um, speak not to just you know what grade you did, but whether you're academically curious, whether you've come to office hours, which is something that advisors harp on students all the time, go to office hours. This is one of the reasons why you go to office hours. This is a place where faculty can get to know you as a person 
and can then convey that to graduate programs that you're applying to. Also, it's important that in mathematics, you fill out um, the personal statement that goes along with every um, graduate application. Um, and at least in part, you have that um, personalized for the program that you're applying to. Um, admissions panels actually do read that. They actually look to see if, if you are going to be a good match for their graduate program. Um, because it's when 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 picking graduate students, especially for PhD programs, it's very important that it's not just the best in some sort of you know abstract way that you know this is the best student, but it's the best match for the particular graduate program. Um, if there's a great student, but they're interested in say this niche area of mathematics and your graduate program doesn't cover that area of mathematics, they're not a good match. So you want to, to research where you're applying to, make sure that they have faculty that are um, active in the area that you're interested in, and then address that in your personal statement. Say that I'm interested in algebraic geometry, and I see that you have Professor James McKernan among your faculty, and, and I would love to work with him in this. You know, I've read this paper that he's written. You know, something that shows that you are actually someone that would be a good match for the program. So uh, too often, I think students think that it's all about grades in GRE, and that's those are important, but they're not unimportant, but it's not the only thing that goes into a graduate application. All over UCSD. Um, we are an enormous school. Uh, we have vast array of departments and programs, and each one of them um, is constantly working on things to support students on, on new programs, new initiatives, new courses, new programs. Um, so I think the first step is to just get comfortable looking at program websites and see what they, they show. There should be some sort of resource page for undergraduates on every program, on every department website. Look at divisional websites. So the Division of Physical Sciences has a student success center um, that you can find by going to the, the physical science website. Um, they have amazing programs to support um, students in math, physics, chemistry. Um, they uh, partner with other programs on, on campus like the McNair program um, and the, the uh, you know, student research initiatives that, that get students involved um, in research over the summer. Um, so I, I don't know that I'm going to name just one, but I, I you know the, the Student Success Center on campus is, is certainly very big. Um, that, that's something that, that all students in physical sciences should be aware of. Um, I think that um, for students in mathematics, um, particularly we're going to talk, say, lower division mathematics, um, that there are uh, a large number of tutoring services um, available on campus. Um, there's OASIS, there's the Academic Achievement Hub through the Teaching and Learning Commons. Um, there are tutoring programs um, in various programs, um, departments through campus. So. Um, if students are struggling in a class, um, it's, it's not something that they should should do by themselves. You know, the students should never just struggle alone. If they're having trouble, uh, I think the first place they should should feel um, they should you know after reaching out to the instructors, after reaching out to TAs, definitely reach out to the departments. Um, uh, it, all of the department advisors would be able to start directing students to um, resources for assistance. 